the Joe Rogan experience. When, when did you start training? What year did you start? I started, uh, I've been doing it for about, yeah, not even 10 years, nine years. So I actually started uh, MMA training as just to keep, to keep fit while I was playing rugby league. So I was, uh, you know, that was when I was 214 pounds. So that's something that uh, yeah, obviously uh, when we're, when you when I'm fighting and you say 240 and, and it'll slow oh, you're getting up. It's your like, your language. You, you guys have that Australian language. You yeah. say things different. 214. Yeah, yeah, yeah sounds exactly. like 240. Yeah, exactly. That's what it's out. 214. Yeah, 14. Well, that makes so more still, sense. Yeah, but still, it's a ridiculous amount it's of still weight. 100. percent You know, I'm five <laughs> foot six on a good day. You know what I mean? Uh, give me a good stretch out. Do some yoga sessions. I might make five five foot six, but. You know what I mean? It's just a uh, yeah. I was a you know a lot bigger, and I wanted to stay fit in between. Yeah. You know, in in between a like sort of the season preseason, so that's why I, w I went and started and just loved it ever since. So that was about yeah again nine years ago. So and how old are you now? Uh, Thirty one. Look at you, there. Look at you, you fucking gorilla. Oh, oh yeah, there you go. See. Look at the size of you. Jesus yeah, man. Christ. You're thirty one. Look so, at that head. <clears throat> so you were you know early early twenties and no martial arts training at all before that um i wrestled so i wrestled uh, oh. before i even done rugby league i wrestled for about probably a year i can't even remember it was you know honestly i was i done it for about a year and uh you know i done pretty good it was something that i was actually pretty good at but you know i wanted to play football with my mates and i got over wearing the tights you know wrestling <laughs> and stuff like that so uh you know it was just something that yeah, I ended up just playing football with a mate, so I sort of gave it up, and I was actually pretty good at it. So we won the, I won the nationals, like you know. Obviously, it's the wrestling's not as big in Australia as it is over here, but you know, I still won like the Australian championship twice and stuff like that. But then I just, I just gave it up and started playing football. Yeah. So that's crazy. So you won the Australian nationals twice. Yes. Wow. Yeah. So that was a uh, yeah. They have them every year. At just and you'd only been there. training for a year. You'd only it, done it for a yeah, year? Yeah, honestly. I remember we used to have a, a game night, we call it. It was at a PCYC, Police Boys Club. It's just a, a local club. Usually they'll have like games nights. And they had wrestling there. And uh, I just went there one time. And the you know the trainer was just like, oh, you should come and, and do training because I, I was doing all right. So I just started doing it. And then I was actually pretty good. Again, I was always... Like I, I literally, you know, come out the the mother's womb like this. You know what I mean? So I've been uh, I've been this big Stocky. since yeah, I've been this big or or you know this high and it looked this old like for you know since I was like twelve. So I was always <laughs> so I was always versing guys twice the size of me and you know what I mean. So I was you know older, much older as well, and uh, I used to do well. So that's why a lot of people you know thought I was mad you know when I gave that up because uh, I was doing so good. And then the same was at rugby league when I played rugby league. Even people thought I was mad given that up as well because that was something I was pretty good at as well. So what made you decide to make a switch to MMA professionally? Um, just my last year of football, uh, rugby league. Uh, I, we, you know, we won the comp. You know, I got player of the match. I scored a 40-meter try. So you can imagine that guy running 40 meters. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was just a... You know, it was just, yeah, a good year to finish on. You know what I mean? I had a couple of fights as well that year. So I was training at uh, MMA and having a couple of fights while I was playing rugby league. Oh, really? Yeah, so that so was a during the training. season? Yeah, yeah. So the during season. the season you were having fights? Yes. So you'd have a game and then you'd have a fight? Yeah, yeah, pretty wow. much. Yeah, yeah. So it was uh, pretty full on and still working, still concreting. Really? So, yeah, Jesus yeah. Jesus so Christ. It was pretty pretty full on. So a lot, lot happening, you know, and... I guess that's probably where I get some of my fitness today as well. You know what I mean? I've just always been a, a bit of a gamer, and you know, just that's just something I've always done. But maybe from back in them days as well. Well, I would imagine that just the the sheer tenacity and cardio that you would get from rugby. Rugby is a tough fucking sport. Yeah. I mean, that's what I think Americans should play. I mm. really do. I look at American football. I'm like, take off the fucking helmets. <laughs> What's up with the shoulder pads? And and on, not honestly, I think it's safer. I think rugby's safer. I don't think it's safe. It's mm -hmm. obviously a very rough combat sport in yeah. a lot of. I mean, it's kind of a comp. It's kind of like a team combat sport almost. Mm -hmm. But you were at least not under the illusion that you're protected like yeah, American yeah. football players have been for so long with the helmets and the pads, mm -hmm. and that's what's causing a lot of the brain trauma. Yeah, with them hard helmets and all yeah. that. Yeah, I get what you mean. Yeah. Slamming into each other, you know. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah it's, yeah. I guess I know, I can see what you're saying there as well. But uh, you know then. Again, then you're looking at that, you know, someone running at, at you know, no no helmet as well. But I, I get what you're saying. I actually think, uh, you know, I think you're right. I think you hit the nail on the head with that Well, one. I think they, they've considered this, but people are so accustomed to football helmets, football pads. Yep. So the idea is to just make better helmets and better pads. But according to the guys who really study traumatic brain injury, that's not really going to help because it's the impact. Yep. The, the head, the brain swashing around inside your skull. 
that is just so the the mm. the amount of mass that you have these guys colliding into each other yeah. it's almost unavoidable yeah it's like what they actually when you're talking boxing and that as well and a lot mm -hmm. of people you know obviously we got the smaller gloves right but then the boxers they ha they have more padding but it's just so many more strikes to the head yes day in day out and they reckon that's actually you know can be actually worse for you yeah I, I imagine it is and then also there's nothing else you can't mm. you're not even allowed to clinch I mean if yep. you clinch they separate you. You know, whereas in MMA, if you get rocked, you could at least protect yourself. You yeah. know, and if it goes to the ground, you could hang on. You could try to submit someone. You could try to wrestle with them. There's not a lot of options in boxing. You know. Mm. Yeah, definitely. It, so, what? So you you did well in rugby, mm -hmm. and you had a couple of fights while you're playing rugby. What was it? Was it just a one on one aspect of it? Like, what made you decide to focus entirely on that? Man, I've always loved martial arts. Yeah, I always loved it, and I love the fact that you know. Yeah, you're in there by yourself. You know, I've always been a, a hard luck like, worker. Yeah, so you could play the best game of your life in, say, rugby league, and still lose. Right. Yeah, you could do everything right. You know, make thousands of meters, whatever it is. Someone else fucks up. Well, yeah, again, you know, I don't want to put it out. Like, put it out. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly right. That's, That's sort right. of, uh, even even it could be vice versa. I could play a bad game, we could win. But I love, you know, the fact that I, I'm such a hard worker. And, you know, I'm always putting the hours in the gym. You know, I'm so dedicated to this sport that so if I lose in that cage, that's on me. Yes. You know what I mean? And, and I love that. I love the fact that, you know, if I am half arsing it, you know, in the gym, you're going to see that come fight time. And I've got no one else to blame but myself. So, uh, you know, that's I've always loved that. And, again, I've just always loved martial arts, even boxing, UFC, even, you know, before I even started, uh, you know, training MMA, I would, like, you know, listen to music and, I would, uh, you know, just picture myself winning the world title and your UFC really? title. Yeah, I've even always loved you it. Were I wasn't even training. You know, it was wow. just something that I, I've always loved. I actually started watching it uh, back when uh, I think because we we had a box. Uh, you know, you get the the chips and you can watch whatever channel you want. Mm -hmm. And the pay per view was I probably shouldn't say that, but anyway, so the pay per view <laughs> was on, and uh, I remember watching a uh, Chuck Liddell. Oh no, sorry, Tito Ortiz and Ken Shamrock. That was the first time their first fight. So that was the first time I ever started watching like UFC. And uh, and that's when I just absolutely started loving it. So I've always, you know, watched it and loved it, and you know, pictured myself being in there and all that. And I wasn't even training at the time. That's it. well, Australians are tough as fuck. It's <laughs> like it's a tough fucking place. There's something they're men. You know what I mean? Yeah. There, there's a lot of. I mean, I'm sure there's some pussies over there too. But they're <laughs> men. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. like one of the ways that people look at Australia. Mm -hmm. It's uh, like it makes sense yeah. that great combat sport athletes would come out of Australia. Yeah, exactly right. Especially prison colony. <laughs> well, now, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's really what you guys started exactly off as. Exactly right, yeah. You know? Especially, uh, you know, well, as you are saying, uh, you know, obviously me being, uh, been looking like this since I, you know, since a young age, like, yeah, obviously you're going to, you know, I'm not the type to, to brag that, you know, I get into fights and all that sort of stuff. But when I was younger, that, that would happen. And uh, so I've always uh, been known to fight and being able to fight type of thing. I've always had to you know, sort of defend myself. Never been the one to start it. But, uh, yeah, there was times where I had to finish it. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just always something that I guess I've had in me. So, uh, I mean, Australia, you guys have John Wayne Parr, mm -hmm. Jeff Fenich. You, you've, you've had, you guys have had some great combat sports athletes come yeah. out of. Well, that's now it's UFC so big in, in Australia. So we've always had, as you're saying, very talented guys. You know, we've got a lot of uh, very good athletes over there. But they were always in your rugby leagues mm -hmm. and AFL or whatever it is. Now UFC and MMA is getting so big that you know, we're getting these athletes starting to you know, train MMA and you're only going to see it grow even more and we're going to get a lot, lot more champions from our, from our region, I believe. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs>